Is building your dream bike even worth it? This is Gary. Gary is my dream bike. There is absolutely nothing on this bike that I care to swap out except for fun. I am dripping in fixie points on this thing. And if I bought a nicer bike, it would just be wasting money because this is already top tier for me. And Gary is my dream bike because Wobby and I collaborated on these Wobby specials to make chrome lugs, something like a classic track bike that is just not made anymore. And we made it happen in the present day. Don't get your hopes up though, because these are sold out and we're probably never going to do them again because of how big of a project it was, much bigger than we were expecting. Everything about this bike to me is perfect. It rides super well. I spec'd it out with the nicest components that would still suit my riding style and be useful to me. And I even got to visit the factory where Wobbies are made. This is my dream bike. And there's a lot of benefits to having a dream bike. When I look at this bike, it just inspires me to ride because I know when I ride this bike, I'm going to have a great time. Everything on this bike is just so fine-tuned and dialed into what I'm looking for out of a bike. The way that it's just so comfortable, the way it's responsive, the way that the steel like talks back to me and we have a conversation with, together with the bike. Like I know it sounds so overly romantic and strange, but this, is the ultimate bike for me. I've had this bike for a year and the charm of how nice this bike is just has not worn off. One of the great things about building up your dream bike is that it leaves little to nothing to be desired. That's it, you're done. This is end game. All that's left to do now instead of shopping for bike stuff is to just appreciate your bike and ride your bike. <laughs> dream bikes are very expensive and I didn't pay for everything on this bike because of my YouTube channel, but if I was to buy everything brand new for Gary, my Ube Purple Wobby Special, it would cost about $3,500. That's a lot of money for a bicycle. But you have to keep in mind that it's not something that you buy all at once. I've been riding fixed gear for 12 years. It's something that's built up over time. And over the years, it accumulates into something that is a dream bike for the rest of my life probably, I am going to have an amazing time riding this bike. It's a bike that will last me forever. Say if God willing, I'm able to ride this bike for another 40 years up until when I'm like 68, you know, retiring age. If I have another 40 years on this bike, I'm only spending $87.50 a year for the value of this bike. And for how nice it rides and how happy it makes me just looking at this thing and how special it is, to me, being able to collaborate with Wabi on this thing, to make something that used to be really sick in the past, that doesn't exist in the present age, exist again, that is priceless. But after running my dream bike for a year, I have to admit that it hasn't been perfect. I've realized that I do a lot of things on my bike. I go to Target, I go to Trader Joe's and grocery shop. I lock it up for hours on end when I'm you know, hanging out with my fiance, getting boba. And this is not a bike that I want to do that. Like, it's this whole paradox of owning your dream bike because it's so nice that you want to ride it all the time. But because it's so nice, you don't want to do things with it, like throw it in the back of a car with another bike on top of it, or go lock it up for hours on end. And because of that, you don't want to ride it as much but because it's so nice, you wanna ride it more. Like it's, it's this internal dilemma that I face with riding my dream bike. And that's the thing with dream bikes. It's like, they might be too nice for what you originally intended them to be. This I intended to be my one and done bike. It's like, I've had nice bikes, but nothing this super nice, this limited, this thing that will probably not exist again. If anything were to happen to this frame set, that's it. There's no more. It makes like these scuffs. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry, Gary. Ah, uh, it makes these little scuffs hurt so much more because of the scarcity of this particular model. I don't baby my bikes, but now there's times where I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll just drive my fiance's car to Trader Joe's instead of riding my bike as much as I want to ride my bike. There are some things that aren't perfect. 
And that's the thing. Your dream bike doesn't mean the best bike possible. It doesn't mean it's going to be your perfect bike for every single situation. There are some things that I don't like, like it doesn't have full fenders. And I, even if it could have full fenders, I wouldn't want to put full fenders on it because I think it looks so sick the way it is. And when I just look at it, I want to ride it. So this is a bike that I don't really enjoy riding in the rain. And the thing is perfect doesn't exist as much as we try to convince ourselves that we can spend all this money and get a perfect bike. That's a fool's errand. There's always going to be limitations to the things that you have and your bike is no exception. This can lead to a very dangerous slippery slope of getting N plus one bikes that try to be perfect for every single situation. But we live in the real world. There's no such thing as perfect. If you try to chase perfection, and I admit that I am a perfectionist when it comes to my bikes, you'll only set yourself up for disappointment. There's this phenomenon called the hedonic treadmill, which states that we chase nicer and nicer things because once we get something that's nice, we end up raising our standards to that level of niceness and it just becomes normal to us. And because it just feels normal, we end up wanting something that's even nicer and even nicer and are never truly satisfied in the process. I am extremely satisfied with my bike. But that is something that can happen if you get stuck on trying to chase perfection on this hedonic treadmill. You'll just never be satisfied with your bike. The whole point of biking is to just ride your bike and have fun and it'll make you healthier, it'll save you money, it'll put your big stupid smile on your face. And when we are buying bikes rather than riding bikes, it kind of flips the script and everything you start thinking about becomes about how your bike that you currently have has all these shortcomings and how you want it to be better and how another bike or another component can fill that need. And then once we get those things, we might just get used to it and then look on to the next best thing. This is just how the bike industry works. <laughs> Heck, this is just how consumerism <laughs> works. They say that comparison is the thief of joy and if you start comparing your bike to your imaginary dream bike that may or may not exist and may or may not fill the way that you want to ride that bike perfectly, it takes away from the incredible joy that whatever bike you already have gives you. Because, Gary, my dream bike is too nice to ride. <laughs> I just ended up building a more uh, do everything kind of bike in the form of Barbara, my Wabi Thunder. And I'm pretty happy with this setup because Barbara can do everything that I want to do, like getting locked up, riding in the rain with full fenders and being dry and being happy, going some gnarly off-road stuff with 43C tires. It's great. And it doesn't really step on the toes of Gary, my Wabi Special, who's more of like a classic sports car kind of bike where Riding is the main activity that I'll be doing on Gary and doing something, getting somewhere is the main activity that I'll be doing on my Wabi Thunder Barbara. My original intention was to just have one bike. I figured if it's the nicest, sickest bike that I've ever ridden and it's the most fun, then I don't need more than one bike because it can fulfill all those roles. What I didn't realize is that for some situations, I don't want to take this bike out because of how flashy it is and how irreplaceable it is. So I got the Wobby Thunder to fill those more uh, grunt work roles and also just to give me an entirely different style of riding when I am in the mood and then I don't have to keep switching out handlebars like I normally do. <laughs> but I'm not going down M plus one. I'm not going to build up a full NJS bike as much fun as that would be because these fill the roles for my riding. Should you build your dream bike? I say sure if you really want to and if you can afford it, but it's not going to be all cracked up that you think it's going to be. I would say that I was pretty much just as happy riding my previous Wobby Specials, even just the bone stock Wobby Special, as I do riding my blinged out Wobby Special. <laughs> and on top of that, it costs a fraction of the money and I could ride it for more things. If you can only have one bike, probably make it like a nice bike, but not too nice. It should be nice to ride, but not so nice that it would really hurt if it got stolen kind of thing. They say you can't truly afford something unless you could buy two of them. And I can no longer buy another of this 
special edition Ube Purple Lobby special, so maybe I couldn't mentally afford this guy. <laughs> but if you can afford your dream bike, I'd admit that you're probably not going to be locking it up all that often and you might need another bike for that purpose. Go for it. It is extremely satisfying. I love looking at my bike. It's so stupid, but I, I will just sit there for a few minutes and be like, just geez, that's a really nice bike. So if you don't really care, about getting the most value for your money, don't care about bang for your buck, but you do care about getting the nicest thing possible because it completely eliminates desire and there are more important things than just getting the most value for your money, but rather what the bike represents is more important than the functional tool that the bike is itself then yeah, there's a lot to cycling that isn't just doing the most logical thing because bikes are art. You can't really apply a whole bunch of logic to art. It's just a feeling thing. This thing is extremely special to me, pardon the pun, because I told a company that I want to do this super cool bike and we're gonna sell it, and they said yes. That is just mind blowing to me that a company who makes bikes decided to trust me and be like, yeah, that's a good idea, because I'm just some hack on the internet that yells at you about fixies. But then there's also those in other intangible benefits, like a lot of the components on my bike are made in the USA. My wheels are hand built by my local bike mechanic, who's also a master wheel builder, Andron over at VeloTrap. And I want to support the people in my country that are making dope stuff so that they can keep doing it. And the choices, every single component on my bike has an extremely intentional thought process behind it that I thought I want to be spending my money in a way that is impactful to people that are helping other people keep making stuff. Because I'm someone that also makes stuff. I make videos. And I feel like making a video is way easier than making a frame set. <laughs> but I know that the people who made the components on my bike are just like me. They're just trying to make it. Nobody gets into biking because they want to get rich quick. Everybody that's into biking does it because we love it. There are much better effective uses of time than making bike videos or making bike parts if you want to get rich. So I want to support the people that are just like me and support these businesses in Taiwan, in Japan, in the United States, so that they can keep making these things that would otherwise not exist. And okay, I'm going on a whole philosophical tangent right now, but it's extremely important to why I own this $3,500 purple fixie. <laughs> because right now in the modern age, we live in a time where things are made to be cheap, disposable, trendy garbage. There are things that are made to be bought, but not meant to be used. But bicycles are one of those rare instances where things are still done the old way if you know where to look. The old way meaning that these things are very well designed, they're made out of great materials, put together expertly extremely precisely and they are made to last a lifetime and put a big stupid smile on your face while you're using it. Not a whole lot of industries like that still exist in the entire world in this modern day and age. And that's why I own this $3,500 bike because it's going to pay for itself and last me the rest of my life. And because of what it represents of how good things can be and how much richer it can make our lives. Well, realistically, it doesn't really matter what your bike looks like. It doesn't matter how many fixie points you have. They're arbitrary. And that was my whole thought process when I was building up my Wabi Thunder is that when things become too nice, they become less useful. Bikes are both tools and they're also art. But before bikes are art, they are tools first and foremost. And the best tool is the one that does its job the best. The best bike is going to be the one that you ride the most. And it's not necessarily going to be your dream bike. And Fixie Famous shoutouts to David K, Salvador Lombroso, Julian Corona, Brandon Black, Brent David, Maya Perez, Ted Entry, and Breakless.Illini for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through the support on Patreon. And remember, now life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.